Welcome to Brilliant Women in E-Commerce series of interviews as part of International Women's Day and the theme this year is Embrace Equity. My name is Emma Bagley. I am the founder of Zeal Agency, a digital marketing agency specializing in Amazon and I'm your host today. Today joining me is Kath Jones, a real entrepreneur, moved recently in more into the e-commerce world. She is founder and director of Think Wine Group, a delicious premium reduced sugar and calories vegan and organic wine group. I've written notes there and also founder of We Are Social Nation, a social media influencer and creative agency. Welcome, Kath. <laughs> Hi, thank you for being <laughs> is there anything that you would like to add to that introduction? Because I wrote down so I could specifically explain Think Wine Group. <laughs> um, I mean, you got it pretty spot on, Bob. Um, yeah, the, the influencer marketing agency is we manage clients with a purpose. So personalities with purpose, large social media followings, and we pair them with really big brands. And then think, you, you hit the nail on the head, delicious, premium. So that's organic and wine. So yeah, you got it great. Thank you. So would you say that um, your Think Wine Group is more the e-commerce side of the business? Would, is that how you would kind of categorize your your two businesses? Um, to be honest, they're both e-commerce because the well, as, even though we're not kind with the influencer side, we are just trying to get websites traffic to their website. So it's still very heavily e-commerce. Uh, all the data we collect is around e-commerce. So I, th I think both do have a side, but then with Think Wine, even though we do have an e-commerce side where we're selling online, we actually do a lot of wholesale and a lot of business to business as well. So I'd say both businesses are quite e-commerce. Perfect. Well, perfect interview then for today's um, session. Yeah. <laughs> so as I mentioned, these series of interviews are all part of International Women's Day in March, and it's around the theme Embrace Equity. So first question then, what does Embrace Equity mean to you, Kath? And how do you kind of instill equity within your organization? S sorry to ask, but are we talking about equality? Or? Basically, yeah. yeah. Embracing okay. people's individualities, but yeah, yeah in, yeah. in, in an equal opportunities way. Yeah, okay, fabulous. Um, so for us or for my business i worked previously always in male dominated industries so i was always dead set on when i started my own business involving much more of a diverse um, team so it's funny because everyone laughs at us now and they're like god you're a team of girls and gays and i'm like well actually no we do have two men on the team so we do have two men, but well, I suppose predominantly, yeah, it, like we're, we are girls and gays. Um, I've always been about, you know, I don't care about, you know, your gender, your race. I do not care. I am purely interested in how good you are for the role and any business that I start, that will always be the case. And I will always give everyone an equal chance to come and work with us and be a part of what we're doing. Wonderful. Thank you. Have you ever experienced um, any kind of equality issues and how did you deal with that situation at the time? So more recently in the wine world, I'd say I've seen it a lot more because wine buyers, obviously my target audience, having a wine that is low calorie, low sugar, vegan, organic, Prosecco or sparkling rosé, it's a very female drink really let's be honest that's who's drinking it predominantly yeah so th the wine buyers the people who are buying this drink whether that be a distributor a wholesaler whether it be someone behind a bar it tends to be a man i am i've noticed in the wine world so trying to explain to a man why a woman will want this is sometimes difficult because the amount of times they say oh our customers don't care about their waistline I'm like, how do you? Yes, know? we do. <laughs> we definitely do. And I am one of your customers, so you trust me when I say that I do. Um, and the amount of 
basically I've struggled to find any women that are very high up in the world of wine. It's a very old school, male, older, dominated, white industry. And I've really come up against that in the wine world. Now, with the influencers, not so much. It's quite it's quite new. It's progressive. Uh, obviously, a lot of Gen Z. So we very rarely come up against any issues like that. But in the wine arena, mm. it's very common for us to come up against like a guy who just doesn't get it. He's like, oh, well, I don't want to pay a couple of pounds more for all those health benefits. Yeah, but um, I can assure you that most women would. And, you know, trying to get that across can be a struggle, especially when they don't even take you serious because they just see you as, oh, you're a young female, like you don't understand wine. But I've, li I've lived and breathed wine for many, many years. So thanks for patronizing me. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you overcome that then? Is it with your confident attitude and approach? Like how do you overcome, especially the men that, are, you know, almost... As you, yeah. you referenced there, yeah, I yeah. talk down to you because of your gender or age. Mm -hmm. Well, to be honest, there is a lot of times that I've kind of won them around, like killed them with kindness, said, I will show you. Let me prove to you by giving me a chance. And then they can see once the wine's on, on the menu that it sells well. But what I have actually done is I've just hired an, hired an, an older man. Because <laughs> if, if that's what I've got to do, to be taken seriously and to you know bash down those doors then that's what i'll i'll do and even though i don't personally i wish that wasn't the case and i didn't have to do that i understand that in certain especially like certain regions they won't even talk to you as a young girl it's all about who you are who you know how many years in the industry so if if i need to have that behind me then that's what i've done so i've gone and i've hired an older white man with many, many, many years of experience in the wine world, so that when I do come get up against those people that I, you know, I would spend hours and days trying to get them to listen to me, I can just send this guy to walk right on in and have none of those issues. So that's how I've actually gotten over it. And that's a great problem solving, isn't it? Because you're not going to change the world overnight and you need to get your, your products sold and into retail, into bars or wherever, wherever your target audience. So you've gone rounds and you've solved the problem yeah. by thinking innovatively. So, um, well done. <laughs> hey, Paul, also, he's he's amazing anyway, so it's okay. Say again, sorry. He's amazing anyway, so it is okay. But still, you know, it's annoying that you kind of, in the back of your mind when you're recruiting, you're actually thinking, I need this to be like an old man with years of experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good problem solving technique there. So do you actually, because you also you're launching or you've launched in the u.s i was going to ask what the difference is in terms of um cultures across the across the states you yeah so, anything different yeah i well we've launched into four states and it's only very recent so to be honest the, everything we've done really so far is like online and then we've got a couple of uh we're in a few bars in hollywood that do really well Funnily enough, it's gay bars and they're amazing. Um, I went and visited there in the summer and they're just like the most amazing bars and it really fits, really fits with our brand. So, and it's super fun. So um, we're in there in Hollywood, but then the majority of what we're doing actually is online. So a lot of what we do here, we can basically just mirror and do in the US, yeah. which is great. But there's so, um, I mean, there's, so much more to be done and actually the way the alcohol industry works there is completely different to here like you can only sell in to you can just sell into one importer and then the importer has to sell it to the wholesaler and then the wholesaler has to sell it to retail and wow. everyone all and everyone has to take money yes. so it pushes the price up massively so it's a lot cheaper to buy it here than it is to buy it in the u.s only because of that because th the rules are just so i mean to me it seems like very old school rules that they could really do with looking at um but they're very very strict on alcohol um and yeah that's just the way it has to be done so it's it's more like the processes that are complete and then and then of course the cost as well yeah. Yeah. but in terms of like the audience that we're going after it's very much the same it's like a female with a disposable income that is, you know, 
interested in watching their waistline or just having a healthier option, but also like premium wine, a premium product, and they don't mind to pay a bit more for that. Yeah. I have not tried your Prosecco. I must oh, I'll have to get you some. <laughs> Are you going to the he goes to the wine show um, in a couple of months. Which one is that? Olympia. Olympia. I won't personally be going. I've got a a, a couple of team members. Mm-hmm. They go to all, all the shows. I do go to some of them, mm-hmm. but I just, because I'm running the two businesses to split myself to be able to go to all of the exhibitions and shows. There's so many yeah. that yeah. I just yeah. can't keep up with them all. So yeah. I'm not personally going. I, I imagine probably Vicky or Sam will all be going. I'm going. I can't wait to go. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> All the samples. Yes. Uh, and yes. They were. And there's so many samples to try. Yeah. yeah. It is a beautiful. It's a great. It's a great event. It's a great event for personal and for business. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that leads me on to the bigger question about your entrepreneurial journey. So obviously we know you set up these two businesses. Uh, can you tell me more about your journey, your successes, your failures, mistakes, and what you've enjoyed most? and least about being a female entrepreneur? Oh, God. Well, there's been many, 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 many uh, of everything. There's been, like, so many successes in, like, we won a Las Vegas Wine Award. We didn't expect that at all. Congratulations. Thank you. It was, like, blind tasting. Um, You know, there was no... There's what I think a lot of the time with, like, awards, obviously, the, the more someone kind of invests within the awards the more likely they are to win. So I always like to enter blind tasting awards. And I just love it when we win and we're up against, you know, other full sugar wines because I'm like, okay, well, even with a reduction in sugar, we have still been voted that we taste much better. So I always love that. Um, So we've had stuff with like so many awards and things where I've really been on an all-time high. But then I've had some all-time lows. Like I, when I first started Social Nation, um, I took on a guy to come and work with me. I trusted him absolutely massively. I would have trusted him with my life. And he ended up stealing £14,000 from the business, um, which it taught me a lesson very much so because it taught me that I needed to have better systems and processes that would not allow for that to happen. Um and now, obviously, that could never happen to me again, mm. the way it did anyway. But, you know, it was it was a very kind of heartbreaking situation to happen because I took him on as one of my first ever members of staff, loved him so much, trusted him so much. So for him to do that to me, it was just absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. Uh, sorry, were you going to say no, something? No, just sorry, I was just agreeing with you. Sorry, it must have yeah. been heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some other lows that I've had um just you know when you experience kind of false promises from people so they say you know we're going to take on your wine we're going to need this many pallets so you put them aside and you keep them there and you're you know you're happy with their word or people don't pay you when you do give them wine oh can I have a pallet of wine no problem payment terms 30 days the payment never comes you know that's happened a few times um and it's just it's impossible to get around it because people just do not and will not pay up front. They just won't, um, especially in this industry. So, yeah, we've we've had a few struggles like with people doing us over financially, shall we say? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh no, man. Yeah, but then we've also had some like massive achievements. So, like we got listed with LWC, which is one of the biggest distributors in the UK which was something that we tried to do for such a long time. Sorry, I feel so weird because it's lights on me. Yeah, there's like a strip. And I, I still look fabulous, don't worry. You don't be, uh, like a beard, right? That's better, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, I've, I've had multiple ups and multiple downs within the business. I'd say probably the worst ever one was, was the £14,000 being taken. Um, and one of the biggest ones, I, I loved it when we launched in the US because I was just like, this has been a goal. I know I've told you that I used to live in America when I was younger. So for me, it was it was major to be able to be sold there and have all like, my friends and everything be able to get their hands on it. That was huge. 